T side. And a pretty, pretty default spread coming up. Don't think it's going to be any kind of a B rush here. The bomb is up there. Lucky is on the catwalk, looking into lower dark. Not necessarily a completely safe position, but it's always fun if you can get the headshot. Or, alternatively, get shot in the face. There you go. Sees that coming from a mile away. Mihu is not a man to be messed with. He will catch you like that. He is far too savvy. And so that, uh, that you know, the thing is, I was about to make a comment about it. Having a name like Lucky. I don't. I don't. You're, just, you're just asking for trouble. Tempting fate, for sure. It's like happy, you know? Except that he was <laughs> never happy, so uh, maybe that's a thing. Oh! All right, I thought that was actually Sip stumbling off, but it was Bubsky behind him. Gonna swing for it one more time. Another headshot for Bubsky. He's finally gonna go down, so it will be dropped next. And Sip, he's been alive for a long time, and he's still ice cold back here, even as he ran out of bullets. Maybe it's gonna be there to help him out, so nicely done. That was, again... Not a very calm performance with the USP. Sometimes people panic when the Glocks get too close, but not Zip. He, he is a robot. No, yeah. And Zip is just happy to be playing right now. He, in case you're wondering, we had the uh, pre-match interview with James Banks. Very cool stuff. And uh, Zip was able to point out that he's just going to get all of his slots. Like, he's he's playing as a stand-in role. He's just filling in because Glaive is uh, is taking a hiatus right now. Um, yes. For the birth of his first child. Congratulations, Glaive. That's awesome. But uh, so Zip is steadying, stepping in, and he's just getting all of his old slots. So he's going to get comfortable, you know? Right off the bat, there's not going to be anything crazy for him. He's just going to get to play his game and focus on headshots. So clearly, uh, it's off to a good start. Yeah, that was good to see. Um, Astralis should have should have some advantages given the, the setup here, even if, uh, even if things are a little bit shaky on their side too. That they're all in land. Sonic is there. True. I mean, that's going to be a really big thing. Everybody's sitting, sitting side by side. The uh, the mood should be fierce at the uh, Astralis office. <laughs> All right. Okay, then. <laughs> what was that? He just took him down. He just made a decision. Right through the smoke. Daps will go down in return. Still some deagles in place. Spellin is here. He's not going to be able to get that one, but at least they trade it. And they managed to do some more economic damage. I think that's an M4 as well. Yeah, it is on Mihu now. Even if they can't win the round, which is still a little bit unlikely. The fact that, oh, actually, almost that flashbang was perfectly timed. That is real close. But if they could have got the M4 away from Astralis, which I wonder if they still will be able to get. Yeah. yeah, they will. Yeah, because Dupree couldn't obviously pick up two M4s. That's not doable. So that's actually pretty devastating for, uh, for Astralis in terms of the economy. So good job. That'd be pretty sick, actually. Just think about it, right? Just leaving a guy 1v4, you know? The, if he could double up on M4s, yeah. that would be... <laughs> you could buy that, a backpack. If that could work or not. You could get, like, more more guns in the next round. Maybe a little trolley, carry all the rifles in. Well, you know, I'm uh, I'm glad to see this strong star. Bubsky getting in there with two assists as well as two kills already. So, I mean, he was a guy who pointed out he got a little bit of attention uh, earlier on the Reddits. Uh, saying that he needed to learn how to fulfill more roles on the team, that he couldn't just be a single-dimensional player. So, yeah. glad to see that he's uh, continuing to try to improve here. I mean, he's still super young, so it, it, it would be a shame if he if he felt like he'd already reached the you know the the full width of what he could be in the game. Why not try and add some more, especially early on? Lucky. We'll go down. That was Miu with another shot. Here's some flashes being exchanged. And the SMGs, they are chewing them apart. It's not really surprising. They don't have any armor. They are going to die pretty quickly. Bubsky picking up uh, a couple of kills there. Three, I believe, overall with the SMG. So not bad. 3-0 and oh in favor of Astralis early on. And EG now, now they have the rifles that they need. But yeah, I appreciate too that you know Glaive is taking a bit of time out. Uh, yeah. Myself, of course, I left for the major when Walter yeah. was born back in '15. One day after he was born from the hospital, because I'm an idiot. Yeah. So <laughs> glad that Glaive is much wiser. Yeah, Glaive is just uh, he's just cutting to the chase there. He's like, nope, yeah. I need to have time. I'm just glad that the straw is also there to facilitate that. Yeah, I think that's important. Magus not going to be sticking around for the fight, and I don't really mind that. That smoke at the corner that they throw from the T side is so good at, at basically taking that control. And you have to make a pretty quick choice whether or not you want to stick around and fight or just fall back. And they, they choose to fall back, so that's fine. Magus is still going to go down, and that seemed like a pretty... That was a pretty weak little attempt to take a peek there. No, no setup or anything, no grenades help him out. Not sure about this one. It looks like EG are well on their way to winning this round. Yeah, they're just winning all of these duels 
slowly and surely, very straightforward stuff here from Evil Genius's death ball kind of approach. Get everybody out long and just look for a fight. Although, got to give credit where credit's due. Mihu, again, with a crucial kill on the man holding catwalk. That was Bubsky peeking for info. Mihu gets that kill, and all of a sudden, Astralis now are like, crap, is it catwalk or is it long? Where do yeah. we need to focus here? And just that little bit of uncertainty leads to Astralis getting walked over here in this round. So, Evil Genius says, good job on them. They absolutely had to win this round to uh, to stand a chance here, because I feel like if they lose their first rifle round, it's just going to be so demoralizing for you against Astralis. Yeah, you have to you have to build that momentum really early on, don't you? If you're if you're planning an upset at the moment, I reckon that's all obviously also the the benefit of playing a map like Dust too. You can set up yeah. strategies like that. To throw a smoke to the corner. Most people know how to throw that smoke. And then you just throw enough flashbangs that they can't really do anything. This is the part that I'm just... I don't know why no one's flashing Mega Skin to that. If you really wanted to go for a peek, just... You knew they were going to be info. out there. You know, I think it's got to be info. He's just like, are they long or are they cat? Which one is it, right? Um, and, well, yeah, sadly, he dies. This still... That's that's such a good round for Evil Genius. So one round on the board, they can consider themselves happy there. They get to build a little bit of bank now because they kept everybody alive. And so now, you should be feeling... Like you're on the other up here. 3G. Dap's getting toasted, though. Yeah, that was a little scary. Not enjoying that on any level. They did get to save the AWP on Lucky, so excited to see what we could uh, we could find from, from his point of view. Love to see him. Even some some big shoes to fill, obviously, if you're going to try and take over the opening on the, on the Astralis team, but still, I think it's uh, it's nice that they get to keep it and not have to spend that money once again. Pretty heavy lean towards the A side of the map right now, leaving Dupree with the entire B-bomb side on his own. It looks like it will be a B-split, so I'm not sure if Dupree's going to be having a good time at all. I'd be very shocked if he could hold this one back. He only has flashbangs. He can't even slow them down. He's getting Molotov out of that corner, and surely he's going to be getting some kind of help soon. Mihu is on the catwalk, pretending that they're going to be going A, keeping the smokes up there, making a bit of noise. And EG, they're slowing this down so much. They can't know this, but if they had gone 10 seconds ago, mm -hmm. it probably would have been even better. Oh my, Anders. This is going to be all on Bubsky here. Yeah, there there it is. Nicely done. Greedy. Yeah, the Molotov, though, will slow them down. There's only 30 seconds. That's a little bit awkward still. Dupree, is he going to get the lineup? No, oh, they just walk in daps. That's a very important pickoff. And he was low from uh, a little bit earlier even, so not bad at all. They're going to get the bomb side, and there's just going to be a straight save coming out from the Astralis side. They're not going to have a chance to do really anything else. A bit of a weird round. That, yeah. that round, either Bubsky needed to get a double kill or Dupree needed to get a triple. It's one of them needed to overperform. Yeah. One of them needed to overperform. Bubsky thinking maybe he had a chance there. That was unfortunate. Uh, got a little ahead of himself there with that incendiary. But this was also a gamble from Astralis. Astralis were pretty committed to just putting up the defense at long, expecting it to be an A hit in the end. They thought that this was going to be a fake on B, and so they kind of played accordingly. And because Bobski and CT is going to be able to rotate over very quickly to A to help out, right? So it really feels like Astralis were counting on this being an A hit, and this is just one of those rounds that's a wash for them. Like, well, okay, we we put our we put our forces there. It didn't line up for us. It's unfortunate. We lose a round. They set the pieces on. on the chessboard, and it's all wrong. It was all wrong. Yeah, it turns out. Um, <laughs> oh, Dupree's face kind of says it all there. Yeah. And, you know, keep in mind, guys, that uh, it's not Glaive calling the shots. Glaive is involved. Interesting stuff. A little bit early on that shot, but um, it's fine. Good thing for Astralis, something that uh, even the core team ha sort of have been historically famous for, is saving guns. They're doing quite a lot of that. I think that's one of the reasons why they're still able to put together a round like this one. Otherwise, they probably would have had to have saved by now. A lot of nades unlucky. He does survive. I don't know if I would count that as lucky but theoretically, he could have been dead already. And this time, setting out on long, no real challenge coming out from the Danish side out there either. You see how it's much more of a catch-all approach? Yeah. A little bit more aggressive with the peak for info into upper dark, so this time they're gonna see nobody's there. Dupree's gonna start lurking back towards CT, towards that A site, and now Bubsky getting eyes on mid. So they are starting to figure out that this is likely, in all likelihood, gonna be an A hit. But uh, initially, Astralis' setup was very much a, a kind of catch-all, let's yeah. see where they are, let's get information kind of approach, what we would call a default. And I'm happy, I'm really excited that they went for that peek into Upper Dark Bubsky, like you pointed out, he got flashed in by a teammate. 
So at least for a while, they know that no one is there, and that's in itself pretty cool. That actually justifies the lean towards A that they have this time much more, because at least they have some inkling of what's going on on the B side of the map. So looking for anything that he can, but not finding it. It's going to be a real quick crossing there. No long smokes being set down. Lucky, even low on health, he's going to get that one kill. Any nades will take him down by now. Sip is going to be dropped, and now Lucky, I mean, he was never getting out of that one. Spellan able to pick up the kill. Sirk with a the one shot there on Bubski on top of it, and... I think he's made his Dupree. Two versus four at the moment. A little bit of a late nade. Oh, it's going to blow him up, but doesn't really matter. No. And that's so unfortunate. If he denies that bomb plant, there was only 16 seconds left on that clock. Life would have got real interesting, real fast, real geniuses had that bomb plant gotten denied. And instead, now you're going to be left with uh, the two remaining Astralis players. Magus actually trying to make a bit of a bold play here, seeing if he can get in. Cirque going to miss a pretty crucial shot. And I think that's going to be it, yeah. Astral is deciding they had a chance had they caught a kill early, maybe turning it into a two on two. That could have been interesting, but it's time to back off and save. And I got to give it to Evil Geniuses. They're doing a really good job of just getting the death ball together and making sure that they can just walk up onto the bomb sites together. They're not yeah. getting picked off one after another. They're really doing a good job of just staying tight. And that's really what's allowing them to trade and trap players like Lucky in the spots that they are. And you know, they throw those smokes for the cross and then they're immediately running. And that also gives very little time for the CTs mm -hmm. to put out counter Molotovs on the ramp or anything like that. Or the HEs. Yeah, because if you throw those smokes down from the pit, I mean, you can see them bouncing off the wall. They they, they tend to sort of, you know, be I don't know, thinking around on the ground for a lot longer. So it gives some time for the CTs to at least set something up. So I kind of like the swiftness of it as well. Ooh, fan of the swiftness, Anders. I like it. Oh, yeah. Gotta, gotta get in there real quick. Seventh round is coming up, and we're tied up. They're gonna be flashing their way over. Cool way, but it doesn't actually flash over. You could see how that could work, but I guess you have to be real precise with that one. Fancy. I like it, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's fancy. We like that. That is very cool. Bubsky again getting punished for trying to play catwalk and get some information. Dupree, though, not gonna get caught sleeping. Gets his headshot. That's exactly what he needs to do. He's going to come up with more because Mihu's there opening up the bomb site. Yeah, realizing, probably realizing that's just a pistol down there. Going to be sandwiched almost. Bomb is awkwardly all the way on the other side, but eventually I'm sure Obo will bring it on over here. Spellan's controlling the bomb site. Just got to be careful of that M4 on Magus. He is walking around. He could actually find the kill. Oh, but he misses up just a bit. Eventually going to get it. And he spins down to long, taking down Daps. That's really well done. Double kill for him and Dupree. And it leaves Obo again. He's been wandering through the desert with that bomb for a long time. Oh, and it's both guys with the rifles still alive. Well, yeah, Dupree, now you can see, because they have yet to see the bomb, they're not sure of Astralis. Is this a B hit? Is he going to hit A after all? That Molotov gives it away, of course, and nice headshot from Obo. Just clicks him away, but now up against the AWP. Picked up instead by Dupree, and that is actually a, that's a shocking round for Astralis to be winning. I did not see that coming. It looked like, especially because Magus really screwed up that spray in the beginning, you think that that's over, it's done. It's not every day, and then he turned, he converts it into a double as well. Because you're thinking he's a dead man, yeah, for sure. And yet, Daps, Daps dropping the ball there. That's a painful one. I think Lucky's face at the end says it all. Where there's kind of like that half grin, like we kind of got away with murder there. We kind of <laughs> got away with the round that really we shouldn't have. And uh, it's not going to be a, a, a confidence building round for Astralis. But maybe they can build something off of it here for uh, Evil Geniuses because it's looking like a quick B hit coming through. Finally, change of pace coming up here or not man again they can't really know i don't know if they've had some sort of a sense that that b bomb side is a little bit weaker it, they definitely have run into a lot of resistance over on a so maybe i feel like even with the smoke up if they would have gone for it it likely could have uh, worked out real well they're right in so far as dupree is playing that b bomb side alone at the beginning of the round so yeah, but Zip has cleared Long House. He hasn't seen anybody over there, so he's just kind of... I mean, that right now, you can see Astralis, based off of the information that Zip has got, they've rotated a second man onto that B site, and Bubs yep. isn't far now, so defense is much tougher now for Evil Geniuses to crack. A lot of this is going to come down to timing, and Dupree can get caught out in the open. Nice reaction from Miu. That's so difficult to adjust to, and Dupree not really hitting much of anything there. Yeah, he did take down Mihu, but probably a little bit late. Bobski. <laughs> He got so many bullets off, and Obo just casually shoots him for the smoke. He's been pretty good at doing that. And the round is done. So even with the extra man in the bomb site, not just not enough defense anyway. Yeah. 
Again, timing, right? That was just, yeah. It's just going to come down to timing and a beautiful opening kill there to take the Megas out of the picture before. I mean, Dupree trades it one for one. But again, it's that situation. It's so unfair, though, because we're just sitting here thinking they need to get two in that situation, right? Dupree needs to get a second kill here, and yet he fluffs it. Yeah. Which isn't something you're used to saying when it comes to Dupree. I mean, the guy is usually so consistent. Yeah, I, you want to see that. It, it, the spray looked really awkward, and... I would expect Formegas to get that kill. Uh, it is impressive that Miu get, got that one. And probably worth highlighting as well, uh, when you are playing that entry role, just getting that one kill, is that's enough. Yeah. That makes all the difference in the world. That's your job. Yeah. So, um, yeah, from his point of view, just, just a good job in that round. Tied up back again. They will once again save a couple of rifles. And I, I really think that's worth pointing out. The fact that it's tied up, is probably mostly right now a function of Astralis saving guns a little bit more than than maybe normally a lot of teams would have would have maybe thrown at least one of these rounds away due to that and then they would have had to have gone for like a really hard save but they keep being a little bit dangerous because of it so that's annoying if you're eg you'd love love to wipe them out in one of these rounds soon just get that hard play and well, here it is change of pace straight out onto the b site completely wide open what an impeccable time Lucky wins the duel versus Cirk. Cirk still getting caught sleeping. Made close just in case someone crossed. Oh, Dupree comes running through the smoke. Obo getting caught, but they are also getting shot in the back. Miu trying the best that he could, but I actually think that smoke made it a little bit difficult for him. And Sip spins around and takes him down. Now it's a two on three. Daps and Spell on there. Trying to see if they could boost over, which you definitely can to look over there. Not going to find anyone this time, but a two on three. They have a Molotov. Could be very unfortunate for Daps, but they're going to use it instead just on top of the window there. If people do anything. They don't have a kit, so already... Oh, they actually do have one. Sorry, Lucky has picked up one in the meantime. Bubsky goes down and looks like they're going to be able to defend it. Sip, big oh. question. Do you want to stick around and, and make it more expensive or just try and escape? And he's not going to get the choice anyway. Still, close round. Probably could have been Astralis winning it, but instead EG take the lead. Yeah, there's that wipeout round you were talking about. Yeah. Everybody down on the side of Astralis. I'm kind of, I'm still amazed that that molly doesn't spread on this spell on, though. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, it, it goes on the window, but then you expect it to kind of drop down the boxes. You see it drop down onto the default spot where the bomb is planted. But spell on was still able to crouch right there in the corner behind the boxes without having to move. And that really makes the retake difficult for Astralis. So a little bit of a, an unfortunate turn of events there for Astralis, who are still able to squeak a buy despite it all. It's a very sketchy buy, especially in terms of the nades. But, yep, you're right. They did put one up, so let's see if they're going to be able to do anything. A little bit of a flash, but I don't think they realized that Miu's already made it this far out. So the flashbangs, they're just peeking close. They're still going to be able to shut it down. Lucky, flash, still getting the shot and a follow-up on Ovo. And that will definitely kill that round for EG. But I actually think for a while, it looked like they were flashing for anyone coming out of the longhouse, and they weren't expecting for Miu to be that far up. So that could have been a bit of a disaster. Good job turning it around anyway. Yeah. You're trying to play off those long spawns, and, well, unfortunately, this time around, it just does not go your way. Cirque is being hunted. E oh, does he turn around? Yes, it's Easy. <laughs> ah, it's good to see Megas go. You know, a bit of grinning going on there on the Strava side. It didn't go their way at EPL. They did not get out of the groups there, and... Here, I mean, I don't think that they, considering Liquid and Vitality, are in this group as well. I know. I, don't. I mean, Cirque is so hard to read because he is the baby face killer, right? But he always seems so depressed. Yeah. And so James was making that comment where he's like, oh man, Cirque looks really depressed. I was like, yeah, but he always looks depressed. Yeah. He always looks sad. That's the secret. <laughs> so I always look depressed. You just can't really read. It's the, it's the, the, the emotions aren't really there with Cirque. But he is, he is having a difficult time. Only one kill for your opera on Dust 2 is not, is not the best. And, I, you know, I really want to put the emphasis on Astralis. Both of these teams just need to get as many rounds on the CT side as possible. Because T side with stand-ins is never as smooth as you would like it to be. I just... I just feel like the kind of offer that we know Cirque, at least historically, has been... Because I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that they're going to be throwing everything out of the window here, AG, and just try and play, you know, a, a complete sort of sure. matchmaking style or something like that. But he should have more freedom to do crazy things if he wanted to. But if he's trying to play like a very rigid style, I wonder if that's also backfiring a little bit. Obo with a nice kill, but fourth so far, so it's going to be picking up Lucky. That's nice just covering that line. 
Cree taking matters into his own hands and taking down Mihu. So now they have to focus on Long. Still a three on four, but it could go the way of Astralis, but not with Boxky. He was obviously waiting for a friendly flashbang to set that up. Nice shot from Dupree, but um, yeah, a little bit of missed time there for Boxky, unfortunately. Well, they know that one is CT now, and they know that one is Catwalk. It's going to be the long con coming in here from Dupree. Looking at a big flank up long. This could be it if Maze can stay alive for a couple more seconds. Sark, oh, there you go. Hits the shot that he needed to. Yeah, now it's on Megas. Ooh, one at a time. That is not how that's meant to go. And Daps will go down. Oh, no. A one versus three for Megas. And that was definitely a slip up there from EG. And, I mean, those are the kinds of mistakes that you could expect from a team. Yeah, they know. Instantly, they know. Sark looks like he wants to just climb into a hole and fill it up after himself. What's going on? <laughs> like a little Kate, like a little... Just hibernate. He's getting out of there, man. A hole in the ground like the Hobbit? Yeah. I've just been rewatching it. Like really? You like to uh, inflict pain on yourself? Huh? I really like it. I don't know why people... No, it's, it's so bad, the movies? I like him. No, I think it's great. It's terrible. I know this. I know the CGI is too much, but I still like it. I can't help myself. I just, I'm just a sucker. It's just too much know. CGI, and it's too, and like they create a love story between an elf and a dwarf and all that sort of stuff out of nowhere, and it's just like, oh, come on, get out of here. Yeah, but that's done so quickly. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it's only like ten minutes. It's fine. They just, they didn't even they didn't believe in it when they were doing that. They were like, whatever. Yeah, just throw it in here. It's done with. Legolas defying physics, running on bricks in midair. Yeah, fine. Yeah, down totally. I don't know. Have you ever tried it? Could work. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back with uh, Deagles, a P250, a scout. I feel like it's so, it, it is a little bit tragic that it's actually EG to have to be playing these rounds because I feel like the way that it's been playing out so far, Astralis should have had way more of these rounds, but they just they've been able to avoid them. This could end up with a with a pretty decent first half for Astralis if EG fumble. Maybe not so much this one, but the next round could be important. All set up on the catwalk. They have a smoke and some flashbangs. They could probably get a bomb plant here, I would expect. Yeah. Don't think they can hold it afterwards, though. I mean, with all five alive. Right there. Turns away. Lucky. Oh, he shot the wall. Yeah. Nice double nade onto Mihu, but again, bomb is going to get planted now. Bomb has been and yeah, I mean, this is uh, going to actually be a little bit tricky now for Astralis. Yeah, this is where you definitely want to be a little bit careful, right? Lucky, tagged up with the scout. Can we get another one? He knows it. I like this from Cirque, actually. He has to be a little bit active, because otherwise they're just going to get forced into a corner and all killed. So I like that attempt. Spellin, nice headshot. Can we get another one? Not quite. And Dupree will line up a double kill of his own, leaving Daps one versus four. And that is just that's too much to ask for. Two seconds on the defuse, and he's going to get hunted down from what seems like a little bit of a revitalized Dupree here. He's yeah. hitting some pretty mean shots at the moment. He's coming back online. They need that. They need him to just lead the way. The experience, the veteran, and the fragger back on the rifle. Doesn't have to worry about offing anymore. Thank you. And it's just <laughs> <laughs> so over all of that. You know, this device leaves, and they're like, Dupree, you're the best rifler. One of the best rifles in the world. You know what? You're going to op now. It's just like, what? Please, stop. Ow. My brain. But he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. And uh, he can let Lucky worry about the big green, and uh, he can just focus, around, focus up on clicking heads, which is what he's good at. I'm glad for Dupree coming back into his own. Nice MG here. Oh, well, he's that. Yeah, he does. It's a bit of a of a cursed position to be in if you're Dupree, because he's like a he's like a pretty decent offer as well. Not saying that he is rambling device or anything, but but then he's never really had the focus to like try and do that. It's like if you become very good at one thing, you're gonna have a hard time moving away from that, right? Sure. So um but I agree. I mean, I would I would rather have Dupree with the rifle. It's fun to see. Uh, speaking of which, he's dying. So, cursing him right here. So is Bubsky, wow. and that leaves Vegas alone in the B-bomb site. And this would have to be one hell of a defense. I have no idea. I mean, if they play it slow, Sip is coming in to help out. That could be exciting, and they're actually doubting themselves a little bit here, EG. Orc going to pick up one kill. He's ready for it. He saw it coming, but Mihu is still very effective in these rounds. Going to be a kill for him right there, leaving it in a two-on-four. And then Mihu's still the heavy hitter. 11 kills for him right now. Still the man making the difference. And now they're going up against Lucky, who is, wow, just way out in the open. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that's, that's regrettable. Not that's, expecting him to be across that quickly. Yeah, but he should have expected that, right? That's what you, you, you're, you have some kind of an internal clock on where exactly they can be. 
but if you if you miss time it that much, you're definitely dead, right? Even if he hit the shot on one of them there, he probably would have been dead immediately afterwards. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, dude, I'm still okay. It was like this is still looking pretty solid for Strahl. Seven rounds on the uh, seven rounds on the CT side. Dust two. Now you're gonna get into that T side. Maybe you can start bullying a little bit here. You can start having some fun with it. So very curious to see what it's going to look like here for Astralis in the next couple of rounds. Magus, is he going to get caught? Ooh, maybe. Daps is, he's got the right idea. He knows. He's thinking about it. Oh, when he gets there here, too. We go. Nice well done. Fun. Now, this was, this really was, I think, the critical round for EG to pick up, because otherwise Astralis would have just run away with the with the first half. Yeah. But they don't, and they all they all get wiped out. Sip could buy something, but the rest kind of can't, so... Yeah, I think we'll get that round of eco. First time in a long time for Astralis that they actually have to just go for pistols like this. Yeah. So that is, I mean, there's a golden opportunity here for Evil Geniuses to, to get this to, to an 8-7 half. Which I think, you know, given the fact that they're playing with two stand-ins, uh, that would be pretty solid. Nobody's going to be uh, regretting the scoreline here for Evil Geniuses. Going into the CT side where yeah. you can start getting a little gambly on your side of things. This patience getting shown here by Evil Geniuses, not over committing. They've got the rifles, they have the advantage. No reason to, to get spooky here. No, they gotta. I mean, this is all very, just very good. Using the smoke, blocking it off. Still have Mihu on that flank, just like in one of the previous rounds, so that's pretty cool to see. And now for Astralis, they have an AK unlucky. That is probably the, uh, the main thing. Wait, how do they have an AK unlucky? Have I lost my mind? Was there an AK in spawn? Mm. How? Can we get the... Can we get the editors on it? I actually am so confused. Who would buy... Which, which, did someone buy an AK for Sirk and he didn't want it? I don't know. Switching out to the AWP. Trying to get back into position. Yeah, they know that he's there. Trying to see if they can edge that kill. And they do it once again. So they take away all the rifles. Not bad. I still don't know where that came from. Same spot. 7-7, seven to seven, though. 15th round. Yeah, full buy for Astralis now, though, so uh, definitely expecting a little bit more of a fight. They've got some grenades online as well, so I don't expect to see them just getting rolled over here uh, all that easily. But I, mean, I think Astralis should still be feeling pretty happy with themselves as they the managed AK. to get seven rounds on the CT side of Dust2. We had it right there on the replays. Okay. So there was a rake in AK in spawn. That's weird. Ooh, flashes over the top. Quick, long take. They go off the spawn. Mihu there to lead the way. Oh, dude, Zipnix. Did they spot? I think they saw him. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and in the pit as well. I think Sip called that out that someone was in pit, but they've just won every single fight. Taking down Bobski as well. Magus can Dupree. Two versus five, and it's just going to get even worse here. What a nice little recovery at the end of the half here in favor of EG. You do love to see it, don't you? Yeah. One versus five now for Dupree. Just take the half, just win the half, and now we're into the second half. <laughs> we are. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all just a mystery, Anders, as to whether or not Evil Jesus is going to be able to pull this off because uh, they picked Dust 2. It's their map pick, but they have True. a 0% win rate on it. So, you know, and not even Evil Geniuses know if they're going to be able to pull something magical off here. It can only go one way. 0%. Yeah, I like it. Obo gets a headshot, but time is running out. And Magus will take him down eventually. Some backup is coming in, but they're kind of running in one at a time. And they're all getting executed by Magus. Unbelievable. He's picked up a triple before he finally gets dropped. Mihu getting a chance to reload, but not able to fire another shot. So now it's spell on one versus two. And they could probably guess that he might have gone this way. Because everyone else was either in the bomb site or walking in through the window or in through the door, so they might have a right idea. Oh, a little bit of an off angle. Spellin almost had a chance there, but Lucky will take him down, and it's a good round. Important round for Astralis to win. Yes, and uh, I do feel a little bit bad because I did uh, I did momentarily think that's what you deserve, Obo getting blown up by the Chief using a P2000. <laughs> <laughs> I know there aren't that many players left doing that, is there? There are not many left using them, and it's just so off-putting to hear that instead of the uh, silenced uh, alternative. Just, uh, just no, just no. Don't do it. Don't do it, guys. Stick with the USPS, please. Thank you. Sir, just got chopped. Down the middle. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Very quick long take coming in here for Astralis. Astralis may be able to use a bit of a similar strategy to what the geniuses were using at the beginning of the half that was uh, so successful for EG, which was essentially death ball it up. If you get a long spawn, take long. Otherwise, go default and then eventually take long. <laughs> 
keep keep going. Yeah, I mean, especially around where you know they're gonna, they're not gonna have Molotovs or anything else crazy. So why not go for it? You could run into a huge grenade stack, but those are fairly rare. So I don't really mind. Sort of slowed down momentarily. That kind of slowed down. Not that Sirk really hit many of those shots, if, if any at all, with the scout. But it is dangerous. What if he did? What if he tags three people and suddenly you're in a, in a really weird position? Oh, both. Getting a bit of a kill on Bubski. But they're going to get plant the bomb at least this time. There is an HE on Obo. He's going to throw it right on top of Dupree. Magus would have been dead from that. But um, he was not quite within range. Obo still trying. They picked up a Galil. I don't know. Save the Galil in my opinion. Yeah. I don't think you're going to be able to retake here. If you can get out of there with a rifle, though, who knows what's possible in the next round. So, would like to see Ovo kind of back off here. I guess he was just hoping for somebody to get impatient on Astralis' side. But Astralis followed it far too disciplined a team. They don't make mistakes like that. They're not going to give you anything for free. When it's an option, when there's a choice, they always make the correct one, even now. Yeah, I mean, I think even with, with new people coming into this team every once in a while, you have to assume that some of the core here are... They're going to be really well drilled and that kind of thing. They'll call it out every time um, and, and make sure that people don't don't get too overzealous. And you got Zonic behind you now, so you know, he's just going to reach over and slap you on the back of the head if you start horsing around. At least I expect him to. Yeah, I don't think they're going to... Those are the kind of things they won't tolerate, you have to assume. But they got the Galil. They kept the Scout. They kept the Deagle. And even actually one on Mihu. So, not bad. I mean, they can they can be a little bit annoying in this round. Make it expensive, just keep going. Oh, like that shot could have connected. Yeah, that looked way too close for comfort there. I'm actually kind of sad that it didn't because that would have just been ridiculous. But it's going to be four stacked on A for Evil Geniuses, really hoping that this is going to be an A hit in the end. But uh, for now, Astralis content to sit and take a little bit of time figuring this out, not wanting to walk into a trap anywhere. Again, that Astralis discipline that we've been talking about, right? One of the uh, one of the teams that really showed just how powerful it is to run down the clock, and not in a Navi fashion where the clock eventually beats you. True. <laughs> Although that's also funny. <laughs> it was for a while, but uh, not the, not quite the same today. No, they're really trying to get just a bit of information. So far, they haven't. I don't think they've seen anyone at all on the map, right? So they might be a, a bit confused at this point about exactly what's going on. EG was set up for a, for a flash peak down long, but now instead that's been interrupted, and the flash is right here on spell. And so is the Deagle, though. Magus goes down 40 seconds. Bobski's holding up a Dark Mew and Obo. On a mission, though. Looking out. Actually running into T spawn at the moment. Spellan probably going to have to get another headshot here for this to even be a doable round, even with the advanced position here of Obo and Mihu. I think they don't really realize it yet. Galil has been picked up, but yeah, just no head armor. So even, I think, through the box, he might have got hit with a headshot. It's still going to do so much damage. He's just... An, and the aim punch on top of it. Not really a fair fight, so... What a shame. They thought it, it was is a B, shame. Anders. They thought it was B. And it's it's a it's a great move for EG. They just guessed it wrong, but it's still yeah. really nice that they actually are able to try and, and play like that. It's the 50-50. Nicely done, though. Bubsky is just getting dominated. Nice. Oh, no way. The lineup for Lucky. CZ75 up close. It's still so murderous. Yeah, it is still... I don't know. I just... I've accepted that I'm not going to be le learning how to use that gun anytime. So yeah, it's, it's for just other people to enjoy, but not certain players. Well, there was LDCZ when it was uh, even stronger. Did he just bait them into taking that? Look like he fired a shot like early, just to get them stacked Ooh, up. Right? Yeah, there it is. That's kind of I don't know if that's it was all intentional. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna say that too. Hey, yep, me who focused right now, but yeah, that's it. That is unfortunate. You line up, that's not what you want. 10 to 8, though, for Astralis on the T side. Fully equipped now. And just taking their sweet time about it as well. Although, as I say that, here we go. Accelerate onto the B side, hoping to pull a fast one. Yeah, really cool strategy. Putting out that Molotov. They didn't even find kind of two people there, but you can just tell that though, both those CT players were so confused because in your mind when you throw that Molotov, you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm going to have 10 seconds of relative calm and peace, but then... 
that just you hear that sound of it going out that sound and you know oh no yep you're I'm done in trouble also look at this discipline i'm loving this discipline from evil genius it's not showing anything here content to just sit and wait at long house and holding on to the rifles i feel like not that long ago we would have seen somebody taking a peek and risking a gun just to take a duel no yeah. more no more now they sit and they wait they play it uh, they play it safe Although we'll see if they can actually get to hold on to anything. I like this little pop flash setup here from Lucky. Yeah, it's a mean one. Although Spellum was actually, he was turned around for it, expecting it. So, good job. Molotov, though, ooh, it bounces a bit awkwardly. Doesn't really go deep in to lock anyone into that corner. Fair play. Ooh, that's, that's nearly a kill. That could have been it. But yes, they do get to save the rifles, which is something that we were crediting Astralis with on the CT side. Good to see EG follow that same line because it does keep them in the game a lot longer. 11 to 8 in favor of Astralis at the moment as we go into the 20th round. And um, right now, I would say you know, things are looking pretty decent for Astralis. Magus can Dupree. That's a good that's a good core of the team that's working really well at the moment. Each of them on 15 kills. Yeah. I'm just kind of taking a quick gander here at uh, the standings. And for Evil Geniuses, I mean, the last win they had was against Vichy Gaming 10 weeks ago. It's nothing but red since then. And I'm pretty sure that they went 0-5 at the EPL. So just nothing but an, utter, an utterly brutal experience there for them. And, and only go up. I, you, you say that, but this is their map pick, and we're going into Nuke next, which is Astralis's. I mean, Astralis yeah. on Nuke is not going to be fun to play against. And playing Nuke with a Yeah, with a two stand-ins, like... Can only be... Yeah, that's very confusing. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find that silver thread, that silver line again. I really am. You know, I don't want to be negative all the time. All the time. It is fun to be negative sometimes. I think the silver lining is, you know, th that Daps has already, he's already been exposed to the worst that NA has to offer in terms of, you know, just getting robbed of several teams and all the rest. So he's already, at least his, his morale is going to be fine, I think. Oh, yeah. He's like a seasoned captain. He's been through all the, like, you know, been through the storms. He's been through all of it. It's fine. He's fine. It's another day in the office for Dabs. He's yeah. just happy he's not playing a cartoon game right now. Say what? We're playing Nuke with a mixed team against Astralis. Bring it on. Let's go. Magus gets a nice little crouch peek and a follow-up headshot. He handles it so well. He's very good at doing that uh, sort of the, the not quite reset recoil and just continues to spray anyway. Um, like half a second earlier than, than many other people would. Very frustrating. Oh, the one health clutch, though, from him. The one yeah. health double. So sick. And again, Evil Jesus once again find themselves in a position to save. Just make his double opening, and I, it doesn't get more simple than that. Just one flash grenade, flashing him in, and then he just looks to take the fights, and he wins them. So it doesn't get uh, much simpler than that sort of scenario for Astralis. And obviously, Astralis are kind of hoping that they can keep reproducing that. Yeah. Ooh. Maybe a chance here. Lucky. Going to be taking down Spellon. That's unfortunate. One of the rifles is gone. Cirque making a run for it. And I don't think he's going to be caught here, so should be all right. It's crazy to me, though. Cirque still only five kills. Yeah. We're 18 for me. Five for Bob. You just can't have that. I mean, something needs to happen here for Cirque. Just on an individual level, if you get that AWP, he needs to start hitting some shots. Yes, I do. I, it's really hard to explain, right? Because again, I would have just thought that, given the circumstances of the team, that he would be, he'd just feel more free to, to like, there should be less pressure on him, in, in my opinion. Boots to try and look over. It does get red, and he does get tagged real far down, but at least he's not dead. I have an M4 as well somewhere. I think it's right up there. Mihu. I don't know if he got jump peek there, but regardless, they're going to put up the smoke. Hang around and just wait it out for a minute. Astralis. Yeah, they've they've taken a lead of this game pretty quickly in the second half. Nice nade. Nice nade. That's the kind of money nade that you want right there. Ripped up on that. Oh, lucky with a chance there, but he's not gonna find it. So this is looking very good here for Astralis to just kind of find it away. This bomb site, there isn't a whole lot that he can use to do without utility. There's an incendiary on Cirque, but he's stuck in mid. He's stuck in mid, and they know that two people are on that A bomb site, so they're just doing the math. There's only three people left, even if the other one is the AWP. Maybe we just try and go for it. But now they know where that AWP is, too. And they're in as well. 
Yeah, they have to they have the time to run back and forth like this. As long as they're not getting caught, it's fine. Exactly. And so now they've baited all the utility out. Actually, Jar going to move back onto this A site. They're feeling it. Hobo oh. and Spell on coming up with the headshots. The Deagles. So dangerous. Obo as well, absolutely hitting a couple of great shots there. The Molotov forcing him back in. He's going to burn alive, but it doesn't matter. Cirque there to find his seventh kill. Two in this round. And that is, I mean, Astralis, they were doing fine up until that point, but... And then in the fraction of a second, we got three headshots from Deegan. Yeah. So Obo, and then you get another two Ooh. here. Just the Deegs, man. If you're going to face them one after the other like that, they, they can't, like, pros can hit headshots like this. It is a thing. That is tough. Talk about a beautiful round for uh, Evil Geniuses, though, because now look at the buy that they get. Double AWP, AUG, full maids. I mean, the whole kick caboodle. Not going to save them. Oh, and this is a little bit scary. Me, who the, what a great defensive stand out there. Triple kill for him. I was about to say, Astralis in that position every single time they decided to fall back from that long corner and EG decided to stand and just stand their ground and fight and I think more often than not that actually blows up in your face but this time they got saved by Mihu. Yeah, what an utter savage. Mihu is the only reason Evil Geniuses are even in this map right now. 21 kills for him. I mean Spellin is the runner up on his team with 14. It just drops from there. So Mihu again. In the first half, giving the opening kills, and here, just saving his team. Without him, that's it. That's a They lose long, and they're going to lose that bomb site. And instead, now it's lucky in a 1v3. I mean, it's still a winnable situation for him, but this is a very weird angle. Yeah, I don't know how you would ever read this kind of thing. You're right behind the pillar, bit of a blind spot. And that'll be Obo taking him down. Nice they, they, they have another orb. Double orb and orb being brought into the next round. At a 12 to 10 scoreline with the money on Astralis being a bit all over the place, although I expect they will put up some kind of a buy in this round. <laughs> all right, Dupree is doing that, but it does look like they're hoping for you. And then, Lucky. you know, Astralis is just going to be that guy who lies down on the saddle and just catches up to everybody. All right, the whole foot ends the whole race. Oh, go. Why making that work? And again, I mean, that's a... Normally, at least you'd have someone else out there with you. He was on his own, so it was all on him. No one there to trade the frag, unfortunately. Giving Astralis that 4-on-5 advantage real early on in this 23rd round. Oh, Spellan, look at this. He's so far pushed up. Org in hand, just sneaking around the corner. They're not really expecting it, or maybe they are actually looking for it. Bob Babski. I wonder if that was the nade that landed up there that gave it away. What a shot, though, from Bubs. Yeah. That's huge. <laughs> oh. Sometimes you just get those brutal shots, and it feels brutal. It's like, ooh, okay, I felt that one. Yeah, that one, that one hurt. Those are the best, aren't they? The ones where you can really, really feel it. Three versus five. I don't think, so Astralis looked like they were thinking about going back, but then they realized, wait a minute, if they have middle, then they might, they might be a hundred other places on the map. Let's just stick to long and see what happens. Smoke goes up. There's going to be any kind of an explosion coming through. With only a couple of players here, it's real hard to stop this from happening. Although that is weird. Not even a flashbang to make the complete the crossing if you don't have the other smoke. Fair enough, but at least you should want to do that. Mew goes down for the smoke, so that's unfortunate. But still, a bit of a mistake, I would say. Yeah, unforced errors like that are not what Astralis are known for. So it makes you wonder what the, what was going on there with the Astralis. Maybe a little bit of the chaos going on in the comms. Maybe his calling after all could make it uh, so that there's a little bit of a, a hiccup there. But, I mean, regardless, they get the, once you get that bomb across, that is it. Cirque is going to be hard-pressed to do anything about it. We're going to get the replay here of Zipmix opening it up outside. Although, really not a whole lot you can hope to do if you're Obo at that point. You just hold a mouse one and crossing your fingers. And, yeah, you can see, I mean, it's just a, a frustrating situation. I don't blame him. Yeah, that is definitely frustrating. Double Orb has been saved on the EG side, but it doesn't really change the fact that Astralis are at 13 rounds. The money's not looking good on, on any level for EG at the moment. No. This is the ideal scenario now for Astralis. If they win Dust 2, you're going into Nuke next.
Yes. You've got Zipnik's back on it, which, I mean, he plays ramp. He's just brutal on ramp. It's such a clever position now. It's evolved with time, and it really fits him. Yeah. So you could really, I mean, it's, it's just going to be very hard to deal with Astralis on nuke, I think, if you're evil geniuses. So they need to fight back here on Dust2, I think. Heavy lean toward long, and Astralis, for whatever reason, seem to know. Dap's going to pick up one kill. Oh, what a great double. He's shutting this down. If he could get another one, this is a really competitive round. But unfortunately, if he doesn't, and they get the bomb plant down, even three on five, this could be a little bit awkward for the EG team. Although I'm sure they will try and go for it. When you get those opening kills, you're going you're gonna to be heavily incentivized to try and follow that up. Zip is there with the bomb. Magus has got a Molotov. And actually, Lucky's got one, and he's quite far away. But if they could slow it down, is that a no-scope leg shot on Zip? Dabs can't know that, but that is unbelievable. He's trying to do it once again. Not quite connecting. There's the Molotov to slow them down. And Lucky's showing up with the other one. He's almost getting shot in the back. Yep, but following it up, that limits it. Lucky spins around. Takes down Spellin. Oh, no. He takes down me as well for the smoke. And just like that, it's a 2-1-2. And the round is lost. Nothing they could do about it here. Obo, just that bomb is too far gone. It's going to be 14 rounds for Astralis. That is really shocking. I don't know if I'm sure if I if, heard, if I heard Maui shouting in the distance there. <laughs> <laughs> if it was Maui or Maniac, but uh, I think one of the analysts was expressing some pain. That was Daps, yeah, through the smoke. Lucky, though, what a hero. This is the second kill I want to see. Oh, okay, just a lucky shot through, takes down Mihu. Man, that is agonizing for Evil Geniuses, Anders. I mean, you pointed it out. That's why b side Dust 2 is the stuff of nightmares. It's so hard to retake, even if you have a man advantage. You're going through these choke points. I don't think... I, I can't think it was... It, it can't have been Maniac. I think it must have been Maui. It must have been Maui. Dr. Maniac. I'm, I'm going to insist wow. on that. I think Dr. Maniac is an amazing name. Would you book a, book, book a you know, an appointment with Dr. Maniac? Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're bound to be better than a regular doctor. <laughs> no, Who wants no to see doubt. Dr. Reasonable? Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, too. I need more medicine, Dr. Maniac. <laughs> <laughs> These days, especially. <laughs> All right. Mihu and Sirk up at the A bomb site. Spellin down on long. That double op still in effect. Very limited on the nades. And this is probably going to be at least close to the last chance they will really have. So far, they have won, what, two out of seven rounds so far on the second half here, EG. That's not going to cut it. That has to change. That trend needs to start to go the other way, or they're going to get swiped off the board here on Dust2. And that will be a real shame. Like you said, Nuke is coming up as the second map pick for Astralis. Yeah, I just, I, it's going to have to turn around right here. And they're playing it somewhat passively. I think they're finding, a, they're having a hard time sort of finding even a, some ground to stand on, but I would love to see EG try and look for that opening. Maybe not even the opening kill, but just find some information. Damps is pretty close here. Although, scoped up like that, I wonder if Bubsky could maybe find him. 20 seconds on the clock. Oh, so little time. Missed opportunity. But not for Magus. He's going to just run in and get that headshot. 14 seconds on the clock. And the bomb will be brown. And Bobsky executing Daps, who might have had a heart attack from the, from the surprise. I think so. I think so. That's just a painful... That's such a nightmare situation there for Daps, where it's like, oh, okay, I'm dead instantly. And, uh, I, and he must have stayed scored up the whole way not to give it away. So you're just walking in there with blinders on you. Like, <laughs> I sure hope nobody is to the right. Yeah. And... Uh, for once, it turns out it was uh, it was a solid position there. Spell on. Can he find Bubsky? Oh. I don't know, but they're going to be able to find Hobo. Locked in a corner. And Sif not going to give that one up. Mihu goes down. And Spell on instead. Going to be waiting by the fence. It's just too darn good, man. Astralis. On this yeah. T side, I, I thought it would be a little bit more touch and go. I thought they would be they, they wouldn't be as clean on this T side, but clearly Megas taking the reins on the IGL side of things is working out just fine and dandy. I mean, he had it for so long himself. So you know, when there was the break, obviously he was calling it. He's one of those players who's really had to to reinvent himself several times, and he's been up to the task as well, which is what makes Megas such a fantastic player. You know, I mean, it feels like adding Lucky into the roster, not having to worry about who's offing anymore, is really just revitalized things for Astralis. So it bodes well for them in the future. Yeah, very interested to see how that's going to be playing out. But, I mean, if Magus could 
could also do some sort of in-game leading or even have the experience for a while. That's kind of crazy. That's yeah. I think you can do a lot of swapping around in different roles, but normally the in-game leading role is not one of them. That's not something you just kind of pick up and, and you know, take a swing at. Mm -hmm. uh, but fair play if he's going to be able to do a little bit of work there. That would be cool. Uh, Spellan trying to see if he can have a play out here. Again, forward position. All about timing, obviously. Sib is watching it as he's walking past, but... Let's see. Ooh, you got to make sure a of it. Calls his bluff. That's the frustrating thing when you're just out of range to punish the molly. Yeah. Is you obviously want to catch him out there. 50 seconds on the clock, though. Now we're starting to get down to it. And Evil Genius is gambling on the B site right now. It's pretty cool. And it may work for him. 40 seconds. Zip is rotating back through CT spawn. This is, or through T spawn rather, but this is going to be looking like a B hit. And uh, with three players there, this bodes well for EG. Smoking it off on the one side. Sorry by the scaffolding. Quick to flick to take down Magus. Which is such a force to be reckoned with here. One more round for Astralis. But they are running out of time really swiftly. 20 seconds on the clock. Dap's taking a bit of a look. It's a scout headshot on Sip, and he goes down. 15 seconds now. Oboe down here. He's looking at the bomb right there, and a kill should secure the round. He's out of bullets, though. Brings out the pistol instead, and Lucky is going to have to make his escape. So great defense being put up there. A moment where it looked like they were you know, just a little bit shaky. That's actually not a no-scope. He just, he just zoomed real quick. That's what we would call a quick scope. Clicking both buttons at the same time. Yeah. Just bam. Drops him. Nicely done here by Cirque. He only had five health after the uh, initial duel with Dupree. So he had to play that clever. And he got maximum value there. So well done on his side for sure. And well, map point for Astralis. But it's not done yet. EG still is showing some fight. With, uh, again, that stack with three on B. They saw the... Uh, they saw the future in the tea leaves. In a swirl and understood. Is that rely has that been proven? Does that work? Uh, yeah, definitely does. I understand why the English are so tea now. Yeah, I mean, just definitely. I, how do you think they had uh, the empire, man? Come on. I was gonna say it was never about the drinking, it was about world domination. Mm -hmm. Spellan has taken a bit of damage, but otherwise it's a one for one trade. Cirque versus Dupree and setting up for a bit of a long take. No one really hard on uh on the pit or anything else down there. Obo is going to have the... Well, he's going to have the... Being charged with defending the A-bomb side on his own. His teammate, me who just died, and he's walking back like, oh, no. They're everywhere. No place that he could stand there. Smokes are going up. Flashes, everything else. They're going to make sure that they can cross this time. Actually, yeah. I was going to say a little bit late on that one, but it's fine. Daps on his own now as Spellheim goes down. One versus four. In the middle, already tagged up. Shot slightly through the box there, but it's going to be almost impossible, if not completely impossible. Bobski does get sent flying. At least he got that. But now, the worst is yet to come. Astralis just one kill away, and they'll get it right.